So it's been about five-ish months since the last time we did a product review here on the channel. And it turns out that if you don't do a certain type of content with some sort of frequency, you can lose the knack for doing said type of content. And that's why this is like the fourth time I'm trying to record this video. So in this video, we're going to take a look at the Minis Forum UN1250. Um, they sent this over to me a couple of weeks ago and I've taken a look at it. Uh, I've, I've done a live stream with it. I've done some initial testing with it. That said, yes, they did send me the device, but they didn't send me any money. They don't get any say in how this review goes. They're not going to see this video before you do. So there's your intro. There's your disclaimer. Let's go over and take a look at the device and the accessories and then we can talk numbers. So this, of course, is the Mini Forum UN 1250. Uh, we'll come back to this and let's talk about accessories first. We get a, a power supply that has 19 volts, 4.73 amps. I know you can't read that from here, but that's what it says right there. The other half of the cords under my desk. I didn't feel like I'm bringing it up here for the sake of this little clip. We also get this base adapter thing so you can mount this to the back of a monitor via this adapter. Um, I've never used one, but I know some people do. We also get an HDMI cable and we get this little adapter cable here. Um, it's, uh, it's just a SATA adapter on this end and then it's this little this little adapter on on that end it's not going to focus but that's what it looks like um it's got a little white dot on there that'll come into play later um, but this is so you can add additional storage to this very very easily and then we get some screws to mount that two and a half inch drive inside here and that's it that's what you get for accessories uh fully loaded as far as everything you need to get started okay so with the accessories out of the way let's take a look at the actual minis from un 1250 uh, it's got a great silver finish to it that I really like. I appreciate the aesthetic of it. It's simple, but it's effective. Um, something to notice about this, though, is that while it does have a great finish, um, I did manage to actually damage the finish on here. Uh, when I was doing some, some disassembly, I, I had, had it flipped over. I took the bottom off, and I just slid it across my desk, and, uh, and it damaged the finish. Like, on camera, you can't really see it. I'll try to th throw some B-roll so you can really actually see it a little bit better. But um, but it is easily scuffable. So just keep that in mind that um, if you're going to set this down um, on your desk upside down, maybe maybe get a little cloth or something to rest it on um, because the finish on here is very, very easily damageable. That said, everything else here is great. So let's talk about it. Uh, here on the front, uh, we get a little reset button that's kind of recessed in there so you don't accidentally push it. Uh, power button that's illuminated uh, when it's on, headphone microphone combo jack, two USB 3s, and then, I don't know, uh, maybe a microphone, maybe an indicator light. Uh, I've never actually noticed what this does. Um, on the sides, uh, lots of ventilation there, lots of ventilation on the other side, lots of ventilation on the bottom as well. Until you put a hard drive in here, then that covers up most of it, but it's, it's there by default. The feet are, aren't on here. I've got them set over here to the side. Like there, there's one of the feet. Um, but I just, I didn't want them in the way for what we're doing here. If we flip over to the back, we get ventilation up here. This is to exhaust all of the hot air out, of which there's not much, if I'm being completely honest. We had a Kensington lock, barrel jack for that 19 volts. You are HDMI 2.0, display port 1.4. We get a, I believe a full function USB-C. I know for a fact though, that it does uh, support both USB functionality and display port functionality right there. So you can hook up four, or sorry, three monitors, not four, three. We also get a couple of USB 2 ports over here. Um, and then this, this is where the, I think this really shines in my opinion. Uh, two and a half gig LAN. I, I absolutely love seeing two and a half gig LAN. I was really, really happy to see that uh, when I first took a look at the device. So that's that's kind of all six sides that we've covered there. Uh, so let's take a quick look at the inside and uh, then we can talk about some of the testing and the performance numbers that I have achieved with this device. So just for a quick look inside, um, like I said, I already took the feet off. I've already done all of the screws in here, so it should just pop right off. That said, this is a bit of a different one from what I'm used to. I actually had to get a screwdriver for this. Or, or you could get one of those little guitar pick clippy popper thingies to do right there. Um, but this bottom plate actually is an L shape and it wraps around the back. Uh, so this is all one piece right here. So that's something to keep in mind for when you take this apart. Uh, it's a little bit different than what we've taken a look at here on the channel anyway. So I'm just gonna get in there and pop that like so. And then we just kinda gotta work around the edge a little bit. There it goes, like so. 
So that's the inside, but before we talk about this, if we flip this over, right here, um, here we go, right there is where that uh, two and a half inch drive is gonna go. And if we flip this over, you can see that it very, very much blocks a good portion of the intake there. Uh, so that's what I was talking about earlier, about there's a lot of ventilation here until you put something in the way. Um, so just be aware of that. Again, we've got this little adapter cable here. Uh, this end would plug into here once I take the little cover off, like so, right, that would plug into there. And then this end will plug in to, into this little spot right there. And earlier I mentioned a white dot on here, and that white dot, I don't know if it was on purpose or not, lines up with the white goop over here on the side of the plug. So just, just something that may save you a little bit of time and headache later. That's how I remember to line it up appropriately. Uh, we get two sticks of, uh, of RAM in here. These are eight gig DDR4 sticks. Um, I don't know, I think they're, I think they're, yeah, they're 3200 speed, so two, but this will support up to 64 gigs. It will also support DDR5, this processor will. It is the UN1250P, uh, or sorry, it's the 1250P from Intel, it's the Core i5-1250P processor in here. That said, it's on this side. Uh, it's on that side right there, and getting this motherboard out is a real, real pain, so you're just gonna have to believe that there's a processor hiding under these fins right there, uh, under there. So, we also get a CMOS battery, we get uh, a Wi-Fi Bluetooth card, and we get, in this case anyway, we get um, an NVMe storage drive. This is a one terabyte drive, but what I found interesting about this drive, we get, oops, almost, almost got it. I thought I had it and I was wrong. Oh, I'm still wrong, holy crap. There we go, all right. So, this, like I said, is the one terabyte drive that this device comes with. And look, this may be different for other people. This is what I got. Um, and the one terabyte drive is just, just that little, just that little guy right there. That is, that is one terabyte of storage, but it's on this little daughter board expansion thing so that it will fit in there appropriately for a standard length, like 2280 drive. Um, just so you can kind of see the comparison there. That's, that's what it is. So they've got this little carrier board thing uh, that just goes right there. And of course, I'll put this back on. Okay, so now that we've taken a look at the outside of the device and what we can see on the inside of the device, let's kind of talk about my experience with the device so far. Now there's kind of gonna be two parts to this. First, there's going to be the, just the standard desktop computer, daily driver, browse the internet aspect of things. And then we're gonna talk about some home lab stuff with the UN 1250 from Minis Forums. So let's start with the daily desktop stuff for those who are interested in that. Once I got it set up, I plugged it in, I turned it on, I booted into the BIOS or the UEFI first, and it's got a kind of a cool setup in there that you can go around and tinker with some stuff. It's a very user-friendly, aesthetically pleasing UEFI area to dig around in. Lots of stuff to tinker with if you want to do that. Once I got into Windows, it was it was Windows 11. It, it is what it is at that point. I know not everybody likes Windows, not everybody like, especially not everybody likes Windows 11 or even 10 or even eight. Um, but anyway, that's that's not why we're here, right? We're not here to talk about what people like and don't like about operating systems. My experience with the device, with the operating system that came with was amazing. Um, I was able to get online quickly and easily. Uh, there were no hiccups, there were no stutters, there were no slowdowns. I was able to browse the internet. I was able to watch videos. I was able to do the daily tasks that just about everybody does on their computer. I didn't do a lot of gaming testing because that's not what this is geared towards. But that said, I did run uh, Night Raid in uh, 3D Mark, and the number came back at about 16,000, just shy of 16,000, which I thought for a device this size, this price, pretty good. So super happy with my experience with this device on Windows 11 Pro. Now that said, a little, little disclaimer here, um, I'm not in any way trying to call out Minis Forum or really any uh, system manufacturer like this. Uh, it's always best practice in these cases when you get these devices to manually reinstall your operating system. There have been times in the past with other manufacturers that I've worked with and others have worked with that the operating system had some unwanted software on it. So 
it's always good practice to manually reinstall your operating system just to make sure that there's nothing unwanted on your system before you start using it. So little side note there, I wanted to cover that because I knew if I didn't, and it probably still will show up in the comments. So just wanted to put that out there for people who aren't super tech savvy and don't know a lot about computers. It's always a good practice to reinstall your operating system when you get a new device. So again, great experience doing daily tasks with a device uh, that you would normally do with a computer outside of gaming. Um, no issues, like I said, browsing the web, watching videos, that sort of thing. And even the night raid test that I did with 3D Mark came back at, almost, like I said, almost 16,000. So super, super happy with that. So it was at this point that uh, I stopped the testing that I was doing. It, it was it was kind of at this point I was like, well, let's let's have some fun with this. Let's do some crowdsourced testing with this. So um, the next bit of testing I did was actually on a live stream that we did in the last couple of weeks. Took the bottom off. We swapped the storage out, put different storage in it. We put Proxmox, uh, the newest version of Proxmox. Uh, on the device, that went super, super smoothly and well. No issues, went fast. It just worked out of the gate. Couldn't actually believe how fast and easy that process was. And that's like, I've even installed Proxmox several times and I was impressed with the ease and speed of installing it on this device. Once we got the initial install done, we did some of the, uh, some of the additional uh, scripts to, to kind of speed things up and make things uh, a better user experience with Proxmox on this. Again, we covered all of that in the live stream. I'll try to remember to link that in the video description if you want to take a look through that. Um, once that was done, again, all of that went really, really well. So it was at this point we decided to um, install a, a, an Ubuntu VM on the device, a virtual machine, and do a GPU pass through. What's great about these Intel integrated GPUs on these chips is that uh, Proxmox just recognizes them as being a display device without having to go through and install a bunch of extra software and drivers and all of this kind of stuff you would have to do, say, with an NVIDIA card. Proxmox just recognized this, uh, this Intel Iris XE graphics card as just that, and I was able to pass it through really, really easily. Um, so I got all that set up. I started the process and I actually had to stop almost mid-sentence to recognize how quickly the, the virtual machine was done installing. Installation complete. Holy crap, that was fast. Like, does that seem like it was really fast to anyone else? Like, I am genuinely shocked by that. That's crazy. Uh, okay, I guess uh, reboot now. Uh, that was neat. Holy crap. Normally that's like a 20 to 30 minute process on any of the other hardware I've ever used. This was bonkers fast, like remarkably fast to get that VM installed. Um, at that point, I installed Docker and Docker Compose and Portainer. And then we installed Plex on top of that because I wanted to make sure that the GPU pass through we had just done actually worked. So I deployed it, realized it hadn't. And that was my fault because I didn't put the device dev DRI line in the Docker Compose to make it recognize that it actually had a GPU to work with. But once I did that, everything was great. It was able to recognize the GPU and I was able to use it for transcoding. And I was really, really happy with that. So we decided we were happy with how all of that went. We were good to go. Let's try something else. So we installed Olama, we installed OpenWeb UI, and then we grabbed some LLMs to do some testing with. And our results were super, super mixed. Um, honestly, most of the LLMs we used, I would give it a prompt and, and it looked as though my cat had walked across my keyboard. The result was just a bunch of jumbled numbers and letters and that sort of thing. It didn't actually return anything of any value most of the time. There were a couple of times that it did okay. I asked it to, you know, write me a bash script to install, uh, Docker, Docker Compose and Portainer, um, for Debian, I believe. And it sat and it spun its wheels for a minute or two and then it spit something out that looked like it might have worked, we didn't actually test it. I didn't want to run any risks. So my point is that this will handle daily tasks like a beast. Um, this will handle uh, being a home lab uh, super, super well, I think. And I love, again, that it's got the two and a half gig networking to facilitate data transfers and, and connectivity, that sort of thing. Um, the one thing we haven't really talked about yet is power consumption. Uh, while we were doing these tests, while we were installing Proxmox, while we were installing the VM, while we were doing some stress tests and some AI stuff, 
um, I actually managed to record the, the, the power usage of the device with a third reality power, a smart power plug. Most of the time, when it's just sitting here, uh, kind of hanging out, idling, it idles at about 10 watts, which I think is great. Um, under just regular use, just kind of plugging around, doing stuff, about 20 to 30 watts. And uh, again, this does come with a 90 watt adapter, but even under stress tests, uh, whether it was an actual CPU specific stress test or an AI anything really. Uh, it wasn't until we started doing those very deliberate, high demanding things that we got it up into the mid 60s. It peaked very, very briefly at 68 watts. And, and, and then it dropped right back down to that kind of like 20 to 30 uh, watt range. So super, super power efficient, does a great job of managing uh, power and that sort of thing. Really, really happy with that. The one thing that I didn't notice that I didn't notice until somebody noticed uh, was they somebody had asked about the heat and the fan noise and um there wasn't a lot of heat again we're, we're, we're capping out at about 65 watts on this so it's not going to put out a ton of heat but what's nice about it is that even while it is putting out a small amount of heat it's still quiet um, it is quieter than a laptop i can say that for sure um, even under full load even even with that fan spinning as fast as it could I had to have my my ear like real close to it to to really recognize that it was any louder than anything else I've got in this room. Um, it just kind of blended into the background. I never noticed it until somebody brought it to my attention that I hadn't talked about that. So I wanted to talk about it with you uh, while you watch this video. Um, it's power efficient. It's fast. Uh, it's quiet. And it's relatively inexpensive. Um, so again, I'll have links to everything in the video description if you want to check out that and possibly pick one of these up for yourself. Um, I think I think that kind of covers everything I wanted to cover in this video. I would love to know if you guys have got questions. Leave those in the comment section. I will try to answer those as quickly as I can to the best of my ability. Um, but overall, super, super happy with the Minis Forum UN 1250 Mini PC that they sent over for me to take a look at. Um, so thank you to Minis Forum for sending this over and giving me a chance to check this out and share it with you guys. And thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me here today. Um, but I think with that said, I'm going to wrap this up. Um, hopefully I will talk to you guys in the next video.